Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've created this look using Kiko's Fall 2.0 collection, which is basically their autumn collection. So I wanted to try it all out on camera with you guys. I asked you whether I should do it and loads of you guys wanted me to. So that is what I've done today. I am just gonna give you a little review of all of the products, put them on my face and that's about it. So I'm gonna get straight into it. So first off I'm gonna try out the foundation. I feel super pale today. I didn't fake tan because I thought that this shade might not suit me when I've got my tan on, although I don't know, it does look quite dark. I can't tell if this is gonna suit me. Also, the sun keeps on going in and out, so I'm really sorry about the lighting changes. So this is the shade three, which is warm beige. The foundation does come with this little brush as well, which is super cute, but I'm actually gonna stick to what I know and I'm gonna use my dirty uh, beauty sponge. So on the press release, it says that this is a creamy foundation, which is ideal for all skin tones and applies smoothly and evenly onto the skin. The appearance of skin is transformed with a brighter and more defined complexion. All right, so let's go for it. I usually do have a spatula, which I use for products where you have to like get it out of the tub, but can't find my spatula anywhere. So I am gonna have to go in with my fingers, which I don't love that. I feel like I would much prefer this if it was in a bottle or a tube. Also, I find when foundations are in bottles or tubes, it's much easier for me to like tell how much I'm putting on because I'll know how many pumps to use. All right, so it seems to be providing good coverage, which is nice. It is quite a thick foundation, but it's really light at the same time. Like it doesn't sit heavy on top of my skin, which is really nice. I do think it might be slightly pale for me though. So I might have to bronzer after using this, but that's fine. I do go paler than I am now in winter time, obviously, cause I've got a little bit of a tan with it being summertime. Not much of a tan, but a little bit. Um, so this will probably suit me better when it's not summer. It's blending out really, really nicely. I'm happy with how it's blending. So yes, conclusions on this. It is blending really, really nicely. I'm happy with how it's blended. Um, it's given me really nice coverage. It is slightly too light. I do need a darker shade. And I do wish that this was in a bottle or a tube, if I'm honest. So there isn't a concealer or a powder in the collection. So I've just done those off camera. I'm gonna go in with the bronzer now. The packaging of this, guys, I said this in my haul, but it just feels so nice, like it's so tactile. I love the blue and gold packaging on all of the products, and also the size of this is huge. I really like Kiko's bronzers, so I'm super duper excited about this. This is obviously just a matte, sort of medium toned golden brown. It's got like little bits of like a creamy sort of bronze shade going through there. So I think that this will be really nice for autumn time actually. It's not too dark. So it says that this baked bronzer provides the perfect balance between color payoff and blendability with a delicious vanilla scent. It also contains kind to skin, your yoba oil. I asked this in one of my previous videos because I don't know how to pronounce your yoba. Some people pronounce it your yoba. Other people pronounce it jojoba. So I'm just gonna go with yojoba because jojoba reminds me of Christmas. So it contains yojoba oil and vitamin E. I also really like that this has a mirror. That's so natural looking. I like that it's matte because I'm not really a fan of shimmery bronzers. Um, they don't make the texture of my skin look too great. So the fact that this is matte is a huge plus for me. And I really like the shade. On to blusher. This one is in the shade number one, New Coral. I really like that it's matte for a start. It's just this really nice pale pink and then it's got sort of like a peachy bronzy shade at the bottom which you can mix in. So let's try this out. I'm just gonna like blend the two shades together. Oh my gosh, so much has come onto my brush. Okay, I'm guessing this might be quite pigmented. Oh no, we're all right, we're all right. It's not too much. It's just enough. I have got a feeling that might be because I have like a medium skin tone and this is quite a pale pink. So if you've got pale skin and you're using this, maybe just don't put a lot on your brush. Yeah, that is really pretty. I really, really like that. Again, I love the fact that it's matte. I do not like shimmery blushes. I mean, it has to be a really, really good shimmery blush. There are a couple that I like, but generally I use matte ones. And I usually just put a bit of blusher like 
kind of all over my face. I like to put a bit on the end of my nose. I just think it gives you a bit of a flushed look, which is cute. Um, I'll link all of the brushes that I'm using in the description box, by the way, in case you want to know. Also, if you're wondering why in the cutaway clips my nails are a different colour, it's because I'm just using the cutaway clips from my haul that I included these in, because... I'm lazy. I mean, I'm not lazy. What's the point in filming them twice? All right, so on to the thing that I'm most excited about. It is this highlighter. How gorgeous. It's in the shade Gold in Progress. I am so super excited about this. I do like a gold highlighter, you know. Ooh, it's quite powdery. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so, like, natural looking. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply a little bit of setting powder so that this pops a bit more. If you guys watch me regularly, you'll know I literally do this with all of my highlighters. Okay, let's try it with setting spray. Yes. That's the kind of glow that I like. I'm not really into like a natural highlight, to be honest. I do like an intense glow. I like that this is buildable as well and the shade is absolutely gorgeous and it just gives you a really nice sheen like there's no chunks of glitter in here it's not particularly shimmery it just gives you a really natural sheen it's so pretty so we have an eye base here which is basically a primer and i like the fact that it's yellow toned that's quite silky Oh, I really like that. It feels a little bit silicon-like. You know when you use a face primer which has silicon in? It feels like that. It goes on really nicely. It's quite dry, so if you have dry eyelids, maybe this wouldn't work for you. But for me, that works an absolute dream. It's got kind of like a satiny finish on me. I've got these two absolutely stunning eyeshadows which are in the collection. So they basically are magnetic. The tub has a magnetic thing in the bottom of it or something, which is what gives the shadow this sort of velvety texture. There's this gorgeous greyish taupe shade and we also have this purpley red. I think I'm gonna go for the red. You guys know I can't stay away from a good red. And this is like a burgundy sort of shade actually. It's really pretty. I've just put some on my brush and it's really weird it's like spongy it's retained its shape that's really cool I do feel like there is a lot on my brush though oh <gasps> that is stunning oh my god that is so beautiful I can't even cope with it do you know what's crazy I don't even normally wear like a dark color on my lid so kind of making me a bit nervous but I really really like this shade it is so beautiful I'm gonna put the tiniest little bit underneath my lower lash line oh my god <laughs> I said the tiniest little bit and it's come up so strong literally your brush picks up so much product out of here guys it's insanely pigmented and I don't know, a lot just seems to come up on your brush, which is fine, because there isn't a lot of fallout. If there was, that would be a problem, but it's just a super intense colour. I really like it. Alright, so because this is such an intense shade, I kind of have no choice but to go in with a transition colour. So I'm just going to go in with a kind of warm toned matte brown just to blend this all out. So once I added the brown transition shade, I just added a little bit more of this eyeshadow just to make it a little bit more intense. And what's funny is, in the tub, it looks kind of like reddish burgundy, but on me, it looks purple. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I absolutely love the colour of this. I think it is so, so beautiful. I love how pigmented it is. I love that there is like little to no fallout whatsoever with this. I'll definitely be using this again. It's such... A nice eyeshadow I'm really excited to use the other shade so for my brow bone highlight I'm gonna go in with this highlighter again which I'll say it again I absolutely love it but I don't know if you can see but there is quite a lot of fallout with this like I don't go in very heavily with my brushes but it is quite powdery it's fine though I mean it's an absolutely stunning shade and I think that this works really nicely as a highlighter with this dark eyeshadow it just because it's gold it just kind of warms up the eye again i'm gonna go in with this metallic liquid liner it's in the shade number four which is like a gray shade it's like a bluey gray i'm really hoping it goes because i usually just use black liner i'm not used to having color near my lash line 
So I'm just going to put the tiniest bit on so you can't even really see it have accidentally gone too far up there, never mind. That is cute. I like that. You can kind of see it, but it blends into the eyeshadow really nicely. There is a mascara in here, which I'm going to use, but I'm going to have to wear lashes. One, because I always wear lashes. I just don't feel like a look as dramatic as this would be complete without lashes on me. Like, I just would never wear only mascara with a look like this. But let's test this out. Okay, first off, the brush is tiny and it's plastic. I love this because when I wear false eyelashes, I like these kind of brushes on mascaras to do my bottom lashes. Like, they're so easy to get in underneath the lashes and just like get your lower lashes. I find it really, really difficult to do that with big brushed mascaras. So let's test this out then. Okay, so it's very lengthening and quite natural, like it's not very thickening, but like I said, very lengthening. I feel like mascaras are so subjective. I feel like there's some people who like mascaras that make your lashes clumpy. I am one of those people. I like big, thick lashes. Other people, like my mum for example, she likes mascaras like this that just lengthen her lashes and make them look really natural and I just feel like there are two different types of people in this world and while I do love this mascara, it's really lengthening, it's not the type that I would naturally gravitate towards, although I would actually buy this just for the brush alone for the bottom lashes. Also love the fact that it's lengthening because when I wear false lashes, I do like a nice lengthening mascara for my bottom lashes just to balance them out. So I used the House of Lashes Iconic Light Lashes and I just feel like they've really finished the eye look off. I did use the mascara on my lower lashes and as predicted, it was really, really helpful that the brush was so small. I have two lip options. I've got this pink lip gloss or I've got this dramatic sort of pinkish, rosy, browny lipstick. Do I go all out dramatic or do I go kind of halfway? I think that seeing as this is an autumn collection, I should just go all out and use this lipstick. So I have this dark rosy shade lip liner which goes with the lipstick. So I've gone away and put some hoops in. I just felt like they were necessary for such a dramatic look. And the lipstick went on really nicely. It's really creamy, but also it's dried down quite matte. Like, it's a little bit sticky, like tacky. Um, it's not completely dry, so it is still a little bit moisturizing, which is nice. And overall, I love the collection. I think that the colors are really beautiful. I feel like the formula of the products is really nice as well. And just in general, I love Kiko's products. I think that they're really affordable. They're kind of like in between drugstore and high-end. I think quality-wise, they're on par with high-end brands, but they have a really, really good price scale. So this collection, gets a big thumbs up from me. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this look down below and if you're interested in trying any of the products out or if you have done already, what do you think about them? And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know and I'll see you in my next one, guys. Bye!